with your own issue. And it's a natural, selfish human tendency. Whereby, you know what, I got my own issues. Right about now, it's about me. And you know what, I need my own, I, need, I, 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 I need everything that I have for myself. You know, I can't afford to give you the last piece of encouragement that I have. Because I'm trying to encourage myself. I can't give you the last piece of prayer that I have because I'm trying to pray for myself. Oh gosh, I wish I had two people in here. You know, but the Bible is teaching us that one of the ways that God can, 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 can raise you up in seasons like that is by you and I making our lives count by encouraging somebody else. And, and the reason why you will benefit greatly from it is because you know that it's a sacrifice. I'm giving you what I need. I'm giving you what I need on a personal level. On a very, very personal level. I need this encouragement for me. I need this prayer for me. I need this prophecy for me. But when you stretch out and take what you need and give it to somebody else, then God comes in and fights for you. Somebody shout yes. yes. And, 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 and it's a sacrifice to do that. It's not only a sacrifice, but it's also a level of maturity. And that's how you, you can gauge or measure maturity. When you can give out of your need. When you can give out of your pain. Come on here, somebody. Because it's not easy for you to help somebody when you're in pain. It's not easy for you to, to try and lift someone up when you're down. Come on here, somebody. But, but when you make that sacrifice and say, God, out of my pain, I'm going to take whatever encouragement I have left. Even though I don't feel like it, but I'm going to take, I will literally pull out of my recesses and give it to my sister. God will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing to you exceedingly, abundantly above that which you ask or think. Somebody shout yes. See, that's the reason why Dave Joseph was so powerful. Because Joseph went through a lot in his season of preparation. He was lied on. He was accused. He went to jail for something he didn't do. Come on. Joseph had every right not to want to be a blessing to anybody. Joseph was gifted. Joseph was anointed. He had a gift of interpretation. And there are many of us that have been gifted. God has gifted you. He has anointed you. You have gifts and talents and inner potential. You flow in the 12 gifts of the Holy Spirit. God uses you to give a word of knowledge, to give a word of wisdom. God uses you to prophesy. God uses you to pray and to intercede. But there, there are times in your life and in my life when the enemy hits you so hard that you're just pushed in a corner. And if you had your way, you would not use none of that for anybody. Can I be real in here? You know, there's going to be time when some people come to you and they want prayer. And you say, you know what, go pray for yourself. Because you know, right about now, I need prayer myself. I'm looking for somebody to lay hands on me and give me a prophetic word that will activate me to the next level. Do I have two people in here? It's just the truth. It is just the truth. And Joseph had every right not to use his gift. But he also understood that it was part of the test that would promote him to the next level. One of the tests that you're going to have to pass, and I've dealt with this extensively in the 10 character test, is the test of, of, of being able to use what God has given you in a situation when you don't feel like using it. <laughs> you're in prison. You're restricted. You're held back. You're limited. Come on here, somebody. You've been lied on. You've been accused. You're in there for something you didn't do. That gives you the right, the enemy will tell you, to be angry, to be bitter, to be resentful. And as a result of that, you think it gives you the right to shut down even on God's people. Oh, you're quiet now. I feel it all over this room. You know what? They're on their own. <laughs> okay. You're on your own right about now. I'm fighting for me. Hello, you somebody. But, but, but the test that came to Joseph was when those two people had the dream. The butler and the baker. And they 
did not have the interpretation for the dream. And so they come to Joseph. And they say, Joseph, we heard that you have a gift of interpretation. Now, the first thing that would have come to Joseph would have been, you know what? Go interpret your own dream. Because you know what? I have a whole lot of issues right now. And I don't even feel like interpreting. I don't feel the anointing. I don't feel the unction right now. You can go find out the interpretation for yourself. That was probably the first thing that came to Joseph. Come on here, somebody. But then he looked beyond that. And he realized that the gift was not even given to him for himself. The gift was given to him for others. To be a blessing for others. And that's the reason why Jesus said something. And I'm saying something because I'm going somewhere. Especially in this season that we're in. In this season when the body of Christ is just seriously in a place of discouragement, despondency, despair. The enemy is just exacting upon everybody. Everybody is in that season where I just don't feel like it. I've had enough. I'm going through. The devil is over. Hello. There is a tendency for you to forget that the gift is not for you. It is given to you for the body of Christ and for God's people. That's the reason why Jesus said, freely you receive, freely give. Now the true interpretation of that scripture in Matthew chapter 10 is that he gave them power. He gave them power to cast out devils, to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Freely you have received, freely you must give. Freely you receive what? You receive the gift to cleanse the lepers, heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. I have freely given you the power, the dunamis, the exousia, the right to exercise without being prohibited. I have freely empowered you to go and utilize the power that I've given you to do these things. Heal the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse the lepers. Prophesy. Preach the gospel. Because the power has been given to you freely. Amen. So now if you follow the context of the dialogue. What Jesus was saying. It doesn't matter what you feel like. When you wake up one morning. And you're hit with disappointment. Hit with trouble. Hit with all kinds of, 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 of forces. That will discourage you and make you not feel like losing the power I gave you. You have the obligation to get up in spite of how you feel, in spite of what you're going through, and freely heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Oh God. Well, I wish I had some help. That's why Paul told Timothy, preach the gospel in season and out of season. Whether they want to hear or they don't want to hear. Whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it. Why? Because you didn't pay for it. You got the power free of charge. And if you got it free of charge, the power has somebody that owns it. And as long as he owns that power, you have to use that power. And we can add all that other stuff down there. Amen. I receive all that. But the true interpretation when you follow the dialogue. When you follow the dialogue. In other words, no man has the right to hoard a blessing. You have no right not to lay hands on somebody. 